Dan Smith and Dr. Jack Sarfati, and we're going to continue where we left off yesterday. Uh, I, I, I understand that you guys were discussing something this morning on the way to the gym, so why don't we pick it up where you guys left off this morning. And that the voice you're hearing from behind the camera is still Kim Burofato. Bur Burofato. And um, yeah, we, uh, I walked with, uh, with uh, Jack over to the gym and he was filling me in some more on his uh, his uh, what? holographic Holograph future thing. hologram from the future theory of the uh, of the universe All right created in a Novikov loop in time and that the uh, right. future horizon is the only explanation for the very small dark energy that we uh, observe in our past because the whole thing is it's coming from the future in this wheel of Feynman mechanism uh, and uh, it turns out that the uh, one over the area of our future horizon is proportional to the small dark energy density we observe today and because that area increases from one quantized bit of inf information at the creation of the universe at the alpha point the moment of inflation a tiny bit before the conversion of vacuum zero point energy into the hot big bang um, the uh, initial Wait, area hot, hot I thought you said it was one bit one bit at the moment of inflation that's not hot no wait a minute no it is it, turns it out is one. hot yeah yeah because because the temperature goes the temperature goes as one over the square root of the area so that's the highest in fact it's the Planck temperature it's the highest possible temperature you can have uh, at the moment okay. of inflation right. and the dark energy density there is very large <clears throat> and it quickly as the as the balloon <clears throat> so to speak think, think of our future horizon as, as the surface of an expanding balloon as that balloon expands and it even accelerates its expansion uh, the um, the uh, area gets larger Therefore, one over the area, the reciprocal area, gets smaller and smaller, so the dark energy is getting smaller and smaller, and it approaches mm -hmm. a constant value, which we're now in that, what's called the asymptotic region of uh, de Sitter space. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, when I say we're in it, we're not actually in it now, but the intersection of our future light cone with that balloon is in that region, and that explains the only explanation, the only rational explanation based on mainstream physics that explains why the dark energy density that we observe in our past is 123 powers of 10 smaller than naive quantum field theory predicts. This is like uh, mm, Len Lenny right. Susskind in his book, The Cosmic right. Landscape. He calls this the 800-pound gorilla in the room. It's the biggest problem in physics. And uh, yeah. uh, this is uh, the, the holographic idea solves it trivially. And mm. not only does it solve mm. that trivially, but also trivially solves the mystery of time in uh, Sean Carroll's new book, From Eternity to Here, where Sean Carroll never solves any. He says, I'm just raising the questions. These are various possible solutions. Nobody really mm. knows, and I don't know the answer, which is like, it's an honest book, and it's a good mm. pedagogical introduction to the issues. But what's so funny about his new bestseller, I think it's a bestseller book, From Eternity to Here, is that when is eternity? Eternity is in our future. It's not in our past, because the past is finite. It's not eternity. The past started of our observable universe it started 13.7 billion years ago, exactly to you know, very high precision uh, from all the uh, the NASA data from WMAP and all that stuff. So uh, if it's from eternity to here, his title implies backward causation. Yes, Real, it does, doesn't it? it? Uh, yes, it does. And I'm not sure if he was aware of it. It's like it's like Maybe uh, he was. I don't know yeah. if he was or is because I don't think he ever mentions Wheel of Feynman in his index. I haven't finished reading the book. I'll have to see whether he. Yeah, you have it here. It's right, it's right there. Well, right there. Oh, it's right all there. right. Don't, I'll just yeah, be uh, don't, don't trip. Refer to it. It's right yeah. there. Just show the book from eternity to here. Yeah, you know, it's a play on on from is here he to eternity. Is he a physicist, Carol? Carol. Oh, uh, Carol is uh, one of the top young young physicists. He's at Caltech. He's a professor at Caltech. Uh, yeah, oh, watch, okay. okay, watch yourself now. All right. Um, yeah, here, here's yeah, the, the book we're I'm referring talking, this, to. This is the book when book. was it published? It uh, just came out. Just came out. Just right. came out. Okay. So I'm so I'm promoting his book and not my own. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> but this is a good book. I tricked you into that, didn't yeah, I? It tricked, yeah. The, the ultimate, the quest for the ultimate here. theory right. of time. All right. And I, you should buy the book, read it on the plane yeah. back to Washington, yeah. from Baltimore. All right. 
So, and now the other thing about we were t discussing is uh, Seth Lloyd, uh, a professor at MIT, mm. has also uh, published an article like in Scientific American, is the black hole the ultimate laptop? Because the surface of a black hole is a horizon, just like a cosmological horizon. And, and uh, Seth Lloyd shows that the uh, area of that black hole surface is quantized in these bits of information quantized area bits of information, and that it's actually a computer. It's like a quantum computer. Okay, the difference is that a black hole is a pretty small... Are we talking about the event horizon of a black hole? The event horizon of a black hole. Right. Well, okay, so black holes have event horizons, but we are outside. Okay, you know, we're outside the event horizon well, of a black hole. Well, otherwise, once you cross the event horizon, you disappear from this universe. Yes, yes. Right. Now, that, but that's very similar, but the difference, now get the topological difference. We are inside our cosmic horizon. We're inside it. So the outside of the cosmic horizon is dual, is like analogous to the inside of the black hole horizon. But we are like goldfish in a spherical fishbowl. We're always at, by the way, we're always at the center of this horizon. That's for this Einstein's theory in this particular solution has this property. We're always at the exact center of it. So in that sense, we're the center of the universe still. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's come back. Yeah. See, there's this creative tension between yeah. the medieval the medieval uh, scholastic... pre copernican the, well, it, yeah. it, it turns out that it's come full circle. Mm -hmm. Einstein's general theory of relativity has mm -hmm. certain solutions which are, in effect, pre copernican And we are actually mm -hmm. at the center of our... Uh, it's almost like a lead that's But that's that. sort of a... I mean, like that's a, from, the, from the observers. It, yeah, well, that's all we're be, talking about. Right. The other right. Okay, right. yeah, no, we're yeah. talking about if every... There, if there were intelligent observers in a different galaxy, they, they have would, their own. They would you have their own center. They have their own center. Everybody's at the center of his personal horizon. Now, it turns out that since this horizon is so vast in area, that we more or less, there's a big overlap between different horizons of different people in different parts of the universe. It's essentially the same horizon. And also, mm. we're also on the same what's called inflation bubble. You have to look at Max Tegmark's homepage. He's another young professor like Sean Carroll. He's at MIT. He's a very good homepage, and you'll see his multiverse picture, and he has levels one, level two, level three, and level four of the multiverse. Our observable universe is the level one material universes. Then there are a very large number, possibly infinite number, on a single inflation bubble. And all the different, it's like bubbles in a cocktail, in a champagne cocktail. And all the different bubbles, every bubble has its own specific dark energy density, really. It has its own, what's called the, the, the vacuum curvature. And so this so, is a multiverse scenario then. Yeah, well, uh, now, but there's different levels of the multiverse. People are very confused. They get very, they, 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 they jumble, uh, garble things together. There are at least four different levels of the multiverse. And this is Max Tegmark. It's not Jack Sarfati, it's Max Tegmark. Level one are, is the observable universe. That is what we can see with light signals. It's relativity theory, what's called the light cone. We have a past light cone, a future light cone, but the light cone gets distorted by the curvature of space-time. And so it's, it's fairly complicated, but it's standard stuff. So uh, everything I've been talking about is our observable patch on a little piece of the, infl of the level one inflation, a uh, level two inflation bubble. So observable universe, we have a whole bunch of pa these parallel universes, but they're on the same bubble. Then there are different bubbles. Okay, and the different, different bubbles may have different dark energy densities. That's the, that's the other thing. So it, it, it gets pretty complicated. It's hard to say in words on a short video like this. But what you have to do is go to Max Tegmark's homepage at MIT, and he explains it very nicely with all kinds of images, and there are Scientific American articles about it. So this is pretty mainstream. This basic picture I'm giving you is pretty mainstream. What is not mainstream is the idea that it's coming from the future. That we, it's a tel the teleological or a Boris idea. And everything is created in a self consistent loop. Well, this, for me, I mean, it raises a logical question. We, where we, we, we can go back to the moment of the Big Bang. We know fairly precisely when that occurred. Um, we don't have any idea where it's going to wind up. The no, Omega we do. Point. Oh, no, we do. That's, that was Tamara Davis' thesis. Right. No, it's based on well, assumption. How far, how far in the future is that? Do oh, we have it's any... infinitely far. Oh, infinitely far. Okay. Yeah, it's infinitely so it's just far. An infinitely however, okay. expanding bubble. No, 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 it's not. Okay, now this is very tricky. Okay. You have to, there's a difference between time and space here. Turns out at, at any moment, okay, the equations of, of, of physics, the equations of the gravitational field, of Einstein's general theory of relativity, 1916 theory, they have, they, are, they have a certain thing called covariance. They are independent of the frame of reference. Uh, frame of reference are sort of like detectors. However, certain solutions, 
Uh, in other words, the, the basic laws of nature have certain symmetries or invariance principles. Uh, uh, and that means when you shift from one point of view to another point of view, certain features of the, what you measure uh, remain the same. That's called symmetry.